We're back, football fans. Sims complete here. I'm with uh, my Faja, Big Phil <laughs> Sims. I'm Matt Sims, and we're breaking down the NFL quarterbacks. Don't shake your head like that. We're breaking down the NFL quarterbacks for this year's NFL draft. The next quarterback that is on our list is Mr. Jaden Daniels. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Heisman Trophy winner from this last year, the LSU quarterback who went from, I don't know, uh, it seemed like on the bottom of everybody's quarterback list to now being uh, one of the top three guys coming out this year in the NFL draft. So what are your first initial thoughts, Big Phil, on Jaden Daniels? Oh, boy. You talking about an offense, pro offense at LSU, some pro re- wide receivers also. Uh, so I like what they do. They let the, It's all about the quarterback. I mean, Matt, just before we went on, <laughs> the numbers in his two years at LSU, he ran for over 2,000 yards, 21 touchdowns rushing. He threw, I, I don't even know if these are right, over 6,000 yards, <laughs> 6,700 in the two years. I mean, the only bad thing you can really take about all this, that in his college career, or I think I got this right, two years, at three years at Arizona State, I had him sacked 64 times, and he was sacked 65 times at LSU. I don't even know. The numbers are unbelievable. He put them up every single week, and I, I, I did what I got numb to it by the end of the year. Oh, he ran, he threw for four hundred. <laughs> he ran for one hundred fifty. Okay, big deal. I mean, it was really truly that. That's my first thoughts about Jaden Daniels. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you're right. I mean, it's just like he's been. He first of all, he's one of the the, the quarterbacks that took advantage of the transfer portal to yeah. give himself a new opportunity at a new place. Uh, fortunately for him too, here comes coach Kelly from Notre Dame to LSU first year in that offense. Uh, there are some growing pains. It it didn't go perfect for, for anyone really involved with that. Right. But you did see progress at the position you saw, I think what a lot of people evaluating coming out of high school kind of started to see, right. That we saw his running ability. We knew that he has a, a quick release. We knew that he was a good football player. And now in this next year, his second year with that L, uh, Kelly offense, mm. I mean, it just, it blew up. And there's no doubt, too, he's got some NFL receivers for him. I don't know what it is about LSU, but they keep finding these unbelievable receivers uh, like the Joe Burrow years now with the Jaden Daniels era. But uh, let's go here just to start here as far as just the measurable goes, right? We know the stats and all that are, are off the charts. Uh, you know, for him and his production, uh, his size, though, he's listed as 6'4", 210 pounds. You know, does he look 6'4 to you? And are you concerned, uh, you know, on the field, I should say, and are you concerned about, I guess, his uh, his slender frame, which right. uh, I think some people are kind of pointing out as this evaluation starts? Okay, yeah, I don't know if – I don't think it's going to hurt him at all in the draft. I think the fact is he's 6'4", yes, he is. I met him when he won the Heisman Trophy. He came into CBS to the pregame show, and he was noticeably taller than me. And uh, the other thing is, too, go look at his freshman year at Arizona State and then look at him now. Okay, definite big-time difference. So what's going to change that here in the near future? In the next couple years, he's going to put on the weight. In fact, I think I even said to him, I said, Jaden, quit listening to everybody that you got to put all this weight on. You know what that weight's going to do for you right now if you put on 10 or 15 pounds right away? He goes, what? I said, you're going to get slower, you know? <laughs> so, you, you know, wait till it just comes on naturally through training, you know, through time, getting older, all that. And it, it is really no concern to me at all, his his weight problem, because he's he is tall, he plays tall. What do you think about that everybody's making a big deal about the weight. Yeah, I really don't give a damn about the weight, really. And, and I don't really care so much either about just the the frame quite as much. I know that at one point in time when we were evaluating quarterbacks, that was an important aspect of it, making sure that they kind of look the part, you know. Right. But I think he is a player that, you know, yeah, hey, he he's a little bit on the thinner side, but he does a really good job of playing tough. He played through injury this past year. It did not seem to affect his performance at all. Um, And I think he's a player that uh, really does do a good job of protecting himself when he needs to. And that'll be one thing that I just want to say. He needs to do a better job of that at the next level. Right. There was a few times at the college level where he just ran in there. And and I got to I got to give him credit, dude. Dude's brave. 
He's strong. He's tough. He's willing to get in there and mix it up. That's for sure. But there are a few times where I'm just like, man, I don't know if you're going to do that a lot at the NFL level. So that's one thing that he'll have to kind of change about his game. Uh, but not concerned as far as the measurables or his weight or his frame either, because I think that really is, like you said, what makes him great as far as an athlete and a player. Well, listen, after two days in the NFL training camp, he's going to realize right away, wow, <laughs> this is completely different than college football. So it's yeah. Alabama and Georgia and about five other Ohio State. Put them all together and you still won't get an NFL defense. <laughs> That's okay? right. So yeah. He, yeah, he's smart. He's going to learn that. Hey, no doubt. You know, I loved it when he was doing the Heisman Trophy presentation when they had that, you know, he wanted, of course, is his dad wanted him to be a defensive back. Right. And um, yeah, so Jaden, you, you, you made a good decision. I can <laughs> right. say that with great confidence. But the number one thing, production, I'm not big in all the numbers a lot of times. I judge the guy. I'm not judging the team, the offense as much. But his production, the throwing was so much. It had a lot in common with Joe Burrow. Go to LSU. He had one year where they didn't throw at Joe Burrow. Then his senior year, his last year, they threw it almost every single down. And Jaden Daniels had two years of that. And the second right. year, he was better than the first. They run a lot of pro concepts. I thought he was really, with all that experience, he could look at number one and go to the second and third receivers. And then also he was really good at saying, hey, one and two, I already can see the defense is going to cover him. So he would make the adjustment and go to the other side and throw the football. I thought his accuracy was good. Uh, my other thing is his speed. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, you don't – when he gets in the open field and he starts to really open it up, I mean, he went around some players, NFL players, secondary guys. They had the angle on him, and he just turned it on and went down the sideline for huge <laughs> gains. I right. mean, he had 60-yard runs against some of the best teams in college football. Yeah. So it was crazy. His um, mobility is going to be huge. His experience is going to be huge. And I'm not worried about the size. Do you think his mobility and the way that he moves in the pocket and then runs obviously beyond the line of scrimmage, will that translate to the NFL for him? Yes, it will. Uh, he'll learn really quick that, and, and I think he it's just going to be natural to run, know when to get down, run out of bounds, when to turn it on, try to get extra yards, things like that. I think that'll come to him very fast and he, he'll feel it a lot in practice, uh, preseason games. So I think he'll adapt to that really, really easily. Yeah, were you impressed with his pocket movement, right? Uh, moving to throw, were you yes. impressed with that when you watched it? Yes, I was. Uh, I think he can stand in the pocket. He's pretty. He's tough. He took some big hits and still made throws down the field against all the really good competition. Uh, so it was hard to find games where you didn't think he played pretty well in. And some, right. he was just great. Uh, yeah. Probably one of his roughest, if not his roughest game. I, I didn't look at the numbers. When they started out with Florida State to start the year, you know, I was watching going, damn, Florida State, <laughs> they were they yeah. were really just, well, whatever. I won't talk about them. If they didn't lose their quarterback, they could have won the national championship maybe, but that's another story. But, yeah, <laughs> that was a tough game. But, he, you know, he hung in there, and it was rough, uh, the blitzing, getting hit. And, you know, first game of the year, you're a little nervous, and you're playing a really good defense in Florida State. So um, I really don't have many questions about Jaden Daniels. I think I have one. One is that I do wish he had a little more pep on the football or speed or power, whatever you want to say. Uh, he's accurate and he throws on time, but you know, depending on where he goes, power throwing the football can be a big deal. Wind, weather, you know, people talk about him going to New England, um, uh, places like that. You know, you, you know, by and large, you want a guy that has a pretty strong arm to fight the elements uh, uh, there up in New England or a lot of these NFL teams. Yeah, so for, for you, when you were evaluating his film, you really didn't see a lot of throws where you thought that he had uh, a powerful arm to, to really push the football you know, in, into tight windows that way. I didn't see a lot of it. I, I will yeah. say this, as the year went along for him, I thought you know he started making a few throws like that. Right. Uh, but it's not a huge concern. It's not going to – I'm not going to take him as a second or third pick of the draft for wherever he goes and put him – you know pass number 15 in the first round. That's not going to happen. He's right. just got too many other things that are just, you know, big time that's going to drive him to be 
high in the draft. It would not shock me to see him be the second quarterback taken, uh, but I think at worst he'll be the third. Yeah, and, and I agree. I didn't see a ton of the power throws, right? I didn't see a, a lot of those throws. Consider, you know, comparing other quarterbacks that we're looking at during this evaluation process, there wasn't a ton of those throws that way where he just cuts it loose and, and there's that aggressiveness. Right. But I do see a lot of touch throws. I yeah. see a lot of anticipation throws, and I see a, a, a football too that's very easy to catch. A, a football that's thrown down the field very accurately too. And I, I really like the fact, too, that it seems like he has a compact motion already. All right. Every throw looks relatively the same for me. You know, he, he has, to me, the most similar release to a C.J. Stroud from a I year know. ago. Yeah. Right. He you and really I haven't does. talked. I just looked down and I said, yeah, motion, compact. C.J. Stroud. Yeah, I, I wrote it down because I think it's you make a great analogy there. I, I think that he's he's the closest one that has that look as far as his throwing motion. You know, he doesn't quite uh, how we discuss. He doesn't turn his upper body into the throw enough to create more power. Right. But I think with just more time on task, he will learn how to do those things. But the anticipation, seeing the field, making good decisions consistently, throwing the football with touch throwing the football down the field with great ease, I think is really good too. And I think for a football player with his height, he actually does a great job of keeping a great base under him too. So he's kind of always ready to throw. He's right. very, uh, there's very few reps where I feel like he gets caught like off balance or unprepared to, to let it go. And uh, you know, that's part of his flexibility his limberness obviously as well, but his ability to move in the pocket and be athletic with his feet. So I think as far as all of those things go, he is definitely above league, league average for that capability. Yeah, I think he, you know, I said this earlier, we were talking about, you know, uh, other quarterbacks, but Jaden Daniels has got that Lamar Jackson trait. Not He's not Lamar Jackson, just saying this. He can move in the pocket, he can go sideways, he can go up, and he can go back. Right. And, you know, when I see that, I just go, wow, it's, that takes a lot of throws, a lot of experience, but I see him look kind of takes a step up maybe. And then he takes three or four back to create space so he can throw it down the field. And um, that's, that's really impressive. His anticipation, of course, it's great. As he was growing up, he had to learn to anticipate why, because he couldn't see the guy come open, then throw a, you know, a 95 mile an hour fastball in there to stick it in there. So he anticipates, reads it. I thought he did really well with all that. And like I said, I think his arm's going to get stronger in the NFL. Right. You talk about it all the time. The NFL football is easier to throw than college footballs, yeah. uh, which we've experienced with a lot of kids. They throw it better when they get to yeah. the NFL. They throw it better in workouts and everything. But uh, nothing but good stuff, really, about Jaden Daniels. It's hard to – I'm looking down at my notes. I, I, like I tell you, I, yeah. I, it's hard to find something that I don't like. Yeah, below average. Right. You know, maybe NFL power, but the passing, decision making, all that is so good that the the power thing does not bother me at all. Yeah, I agree. There, there's there's very few things really that I think is you know he doesn't lack you know anything right. There is just a a, a room I feel like for him to develop more as he gets more experience right. as as a thrower that way. I think he's capable of all of these things. I think he's capable of throwing with more power. You know, as he gets more you know uh, comfortable with his throwing motion and, and the the style in which the NFL will ask him to perform at. I think he's more than capable of that. I think what's really cool too is that I can see him mixing into a lot of different offenses in the NFL. You know, I could see him meshing really well with a, you know, under center, you know, O'Connell Vikings type of offense that's heavy play action, getting away from the line of scrimmage, including some of those boots and nakeds and also some of the RPOs and and some of the other keepers too for him to keep his athleticism. I also could see him more in just like a, you know, more wide open offense too, where it's just spread him out, put him in the shotgun, let him see the big field, spread the defense out and allow him to be athletic and make things happen for you. So that's where I get like excited when I evaluate him is I can kind of see him molding into both worlds very efficiently. Right. Well, look, I know he can do the spread offense. That's for sure. If you We've put it all that. in the quarterback, <laughs> yeah. I've seen, you know, getting under center and doing play actions. Yeah. He's going to be able to do that, but wherever he gets drafted, I think it's going to be more of what we saw at LSU. Right. You know, they know 
that's going to translate immediately to their NFL offense, I, yeah. I think. So, yeah, he'll be in the shotgun a lot. And if he gets under center, I don't think it'll be a lot either. But, uh, yeah, his, run, <laughs> his running ability, um, his movement in the pocket, uh, his anticipation, everything. I'm just trying to find something that we're going to complain about. And it's tough when you talk about his what he has done on the football field the last yeah. five years. Yeah, so. for sure. And that's right. Five years of college experience playing the quarterback position, you know, multiple offensive coordinators, multiple coaches. And, and I, I always value that, too, that his ability to be resilient, to learn, adapt. Uh, you know, it definitely shows and he's gotten better, you know, throughout his career, despite having some tough times at Arizona State. So there's a there's a lot to commend with that. Now, for you, is he a day one NFL starter or would you like to see him kind of be groomed into being a starter, you know, waiting? Uh, I would say it wouldn't. I don't know if he'll be a, you know, listen, all the quarterbacks, you know, are you going to be a day one starter yeah, I'll just say this. If you start, I'm going to say you're a day one starter. If you start within the first five games. Okay. So yeah. let's give him a game or two on the sideline. Maybe whatever you get him some plays, but sooner or later, he's going to be the starting quarterback wherever he's drafted. Will right. it be week one or week five? I don't think it makes a difference. I think the extra time watching from the sideline, if it's a few games is always good for you. Right. Because you just get a better feel for what's going on. You get to watch the game film and, you know, see what the other guy did in front of you that you're going to do better. And you learn from. And, of course, they'll ramp that up with the practice, the reps, and all that. So, yeah, he's going to be a starter, I'd say, no later than week five. He, they're going to get him in there wherever he's drafted. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. So that's but, all we got. Yeah, yeah go ahead. No, last thing. I'm real, Like I've said in the, the other quarterbacks we've done, I want to see, oh, he's not going to throw at the combine. So he's not going to do it. He's going to wait for his pro day. So gosh, I, that I was, I'm excited to see some of these guys <laughs> and see what they look like. Cause you know, yeah. you're throwing on air, man. I want to see it. Let it go. Yeah. And, you know, so, but yeah, he's not going to do it. And you know what? I don't blame him. Yeah. The combine, was, the combine's a frustrating thing. You know, you get, you get two or three or whatever in a row and then you go and you sit and you wait and yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, one day they'll clean up that process and make it a little bit, a uh, little bit better, better way to evaluate some of the quarterbacks. My last thing about Jaden Daniels is this: just meeting, really nice kid, all that. But I think he's one of these guys that can take control of the huddle, and right. he will he will gain the respect of veteran players. I think really quick, which will really be a good help to him as a as a quarterback in the league. Yeah, definitely will. That's for sure. So uh, it's great insight. Big Phil, always a pleasure. Yeah. That's all we got today for Jaden Daniels. We'll have more quarterbacks for the 2024 NFL draft here coming soon. Sims complete. Always a pleasure with you, Big Phil. We'll see you next time. Toodles. Yes, Captain. Toodles. <laughs> yes.